Washington, calling David Harding, counter spy. Washington, calling David Harding, counter spy. Harding, counter spy, calling Washington. Makers of Mail Pouch Chewing Tobacco and Kentucky Club Smoking Tobacco present David Harding, Counter Spy. In Washington, a very prominent bachelor by the name of Harold R. Blake stood in the center of his expensive apartment. The time... 11.25 at night. A dim light burned on a small ebony side table. Mr. Blake stood there. His face was ashen white. Great beads of perspiration stood out on his forehead. Go on. Pull the trigger, you coward. You betrayed your country. Go on. Go on. Have the editor hold the press. Harold R. Blake has just committed suicide in his living room. He left a note saying it was because of ill health. It's a clear-cut case of suicide, Mr. Harding. A wealthy bachelor in poor health, a gun... I admit, Peters, Harold Blake probably did commit suicide. But remember this. Blake held a very critical post in our government. We're still at war, and trained enemy agents are still at work. And they're experts at making murder appear to be suicide. Are you going to investigate? Well, I think I'll at least ask a few questions. The note Blake left said he was committing suicide because of ill health. I think I'll phone his doctor and see how bad his health really was. You would know, Dr. Wolf, if Mr. Blake was in poor health. Mr. Harding, I was shocked at Mr. Blake's suicide. From everything I know, he was in perfect health. Thank you, Doctor. That's all I wanted to know. Goodbye. Peter, I think I'll go over to Mr. Blake's bank and see if his finances were worrying him. No, Mr. Harding, Mr. Blake's finances were in perfect condition. He had many government bonds and securities, and I'd say he was worth close to a million dollars. Thank you. Peter's... When a man commits suicide, it isn't his health and it isn't finances. Look for the woman. Exactly. That's just what I want you to do, Peters. Pick six men and turn the city of Washington inside out. But find out what woman Harold Blake paid special attention to. Mr. Harding, I've just completed that investigation. Blake was described as having a spotless reputation. Congenial, sociable, friendly, but never escorted any particular woman. All right, Peters. That ends that lead. But meet me later. I'm going to take a long chance now. This is the accounting firm which Blake employed to handle his books. Why, yes, Mr. Harding. We have been the accountants for Mr. Blake's firm for 11 years. Uh-huh. Well, Mr. Stanton... I want you to go to Mr. Blake's office and get his office pad of appointments for the past year. Note especially on the list, lapses of time. Then compare those dates with his personal checks. I want to know what personal checks were made out during those periods of absences. This should tell us where Mr. Blake was during those absences. Mr. Harding, we went over Mr. Blake's office pad and found he was absent from his business during the past year on four different occasions, a week at each time. Good. Now, during those absences, did he make out any personal checks? Yes, he did. His first absence corresponds with a check he made out at the Saratoga Hotel, Saratoga Springs. During Mr. Blake's second absence, he made out several checks at the clubhouse, Pine Hill, South Carolina. Uh This third check, it was made out at the Hampton Towers Hotel, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh-huh. 
Well, the cashing of those personal checks certainly shows where he spent his time when he was absent in his office. Thank you. This is J-16 calling Mr. Harding from Saratoga Springs. Man in question spent week here in company of woman, dark complexion, about 31, expensively dressed, unusually attractive. Full report follows. J-8, reporting Mr. Harding from Pine Hill, South Carolina. Man in question stayed here accompanied by unknown woman in early 30s. Dark, very attractive, expensively dressed. Report follows. Well, this is beginning to get very interesting, Chief. Yet we still may be on a wild goose chase, Peter. We have no idea ever who that girl was. You may have been perfectly all right. Yes, but how can we ever find her? Well, here's a little something I dug up. Hmm? On April the 2nd, Harold Blake made out a check to the Washington Jewelry Company for $8,000. Hmm. A pretty sizable amount for a bachelor to be making out to send to a jewelry house. That's what I thought, Peter. We're going to check that jewelry house. I wonder just what Harold Blake bought with that $8,000. J-11, Mr. Harding. Mr. Blake bought a solitaire diamond ring, ten and one-half carats, platinum setting. Woman's ring. No record for whom he was buying the ring. That's all. Thank you. Well, Peters, now we know Mr. Blake bought a ring for some woman. But who's the woman? Where is she? That's a tough question, Chief. Well, let's put two and two together and try to make five. An $8,000 ring. That's an expensive ring. Check all insurance companies, Peters, and see if within a few days after April the 2nd, any woman insured a ring for approximately $8,000. We're getting somewhere, Chief. Here's the insurance report. Uh -huh. April 5th. A solitaire diamond ring, platinum setting, was insured for $8,000 by Miss Adele Winston. Hotel Belmont, Washington. Winston, Adele Winston. That's right, I have a report on her here. Age, 32, height, 5 foot 5. Light hair, light complexion. Educated in France and Switzerland. Certainly above the coat. Hmm. But the woman seen with Harold Blake at the resort was dark. Dark hair. No, a waits or a partner would be the same. Both apparently wealthy, both... Smart dressers. Peter, there's something wrong about all this. Something very wrong. The problem has got to be approached from some unusual angle. Oh, you have a very beautiful apartment here, girl. Oh, thank you, Mr. Harding. Hi, Colonel. I'm here to make a very unusual request. You knew Harold Blake personally, didn't you? Oh, yes. Uh, was his uh, suicide a bona fide suicide, Mr. Harding? To be perfectly candid, Colonel Higgins, I don't know. And that's why I've come to you. But I need the aid of a citizen, Colonel, who has a very important governmental responsibility. You're 48? That's correct. A bachelor. A confirmed one. Well, you're a very handsome man. Oh, come now. Yes, very fascinating to women. Oh, now, wait a minute. No, no, hey. this is serious business, Colonel. As I understand it, when there's to be an invasion of the Pacific Islands, at the very last minute, special charts must be supplied to all freighters so they'll know the little harbors where they'll have to unload the supplies. Yes, that's correct. And naturally, months beforehand... I have lists of such harbors, so those charts can be printed at the last minute. Uh -huh. well, that's why I'm so careful of making new acquaintances. I have a responsibility on you, Colonel. That's just why I've come to you. Do you happen to know a Miss Adele Winston? Uh, no. No, I've never happened to meet her, Mr. Harding, but she's a very gorgeous woman. Uh, anyway, she's usually surrounded by any number of admirers. Well, I'm going to arrange for you to meet her, Colonel. I'm going to ask you to make yourself just as interesting to her as possible. Oh, well, In uh, fact, I'm going to ask you to try and make it even a constant attachment for a time. Oh, no, Harding. That's a little too much. Oh, no, not at all. Well, Colonel Higgins, you could be the principal factor in possibly exposing one of the most clever spies in this country today. You don't think Adele Winston was in any way connected with Blake's suicide? 
You don't think she's acting as a spy? That's just what I want to find out, Colonel. Good Lord, Harding. Now, I've arranged with Lady Carlin to give a reception next Friday evening. I've given her a list of guests that she's to include. Miss Winston will be one. I'd appreciate your being another. Casually meeting her. Naturally, Harding. Under those conditions, no man could refuse. I thought you'd feel that way, Colonel. Now, after you meet her, please don't try to contact me in any way. Leave it up to me. Find out what you're doing. J.A. to Mr. Hardy. March 24th, 7.35 p.m. Colonel Higgins boarded train at Washington. After an hour, was joined by a woman already on train. She's of dark complexion, expensively dressed, very attractive, black hair, height approximately five feet five inches. Ticket reads, Palm Springs. That is all. That's strange, Julie. That's not the description of Adele Winston. J-9 aboard New Orleans Limited, reporting to Mr. Harding, April 16th, 4.20 p.m. The colonel in question boarded train at Washington. Hour later, joined woman on train. Dark complexion, expensively dressed. Very beautiful and exotic. Weight about 110 pounds. Tickets read Atlanta, Georgia. Peters, who is meeting Colonel Higgins on these trips? Is it Adele Winston or who is it? <laughs> girl has been meeting Colonel Higgins. Good, Peters. What'd you find out? You were right, sir. After the girl got off the train with the colonel, I went into a compartment. There were unmistakable signs of dark-colored face powder. There were also traces both of blonde hair and black hair. The black hair had definitely come out of a wig. Uh -huh. Apparently, the girl must board the train, get a compartment, and change her appearance before she comes out and meets the colonel. Uh, and it is Adele Winston, because she's been absent from Washington at the same time as the colonel has. Probably she explained to the colonel that because of her prominent standing, she must disguise herself. And Miss Adele Winston must have been the mysterious woman with whom Harold Blake went off on trips before he was murdered. Without a doubt. She's connected with his murder in some manner. And now, right now, she and the colonel are down at Virginia Beach. Very much like the Harold Blake setup. That's what I'm afraid of, Peters. And we've got to make sure Colonel Higgins isn't killed the same way. Back to David Harding, counter-spy, in just a moment. But first, Mail Pouch is one of America's best-known and most popular chewing tobaccos. A popularity and preference built on uniform, consistent quality and delightful taste and flavor. On or off the job, Mail Pouch is a favorite because chewing serves to steady nerves. And Mail Pouch helps to ease the tension of hard, strenuous work. Helps to relax tired, tense minds and bodies. Mail pouch is delicious and satisfying, full of pleasure and long-lasting goodness because it is made of choice selected tobaccos, properly aged and skillfully blended to an exclusive formula. Next time you buy chewing tobacco, buy a supply of mail pouch. Treat yourself to the best. And now back to David Harding, Counter Spy. What a beautiful sunset, Adele. Uh, yes, it is beautiful, Roy. I love to lie on the beach after all the others have gone on. Yes, it is nice. Roy, sometimes I see a look come over your face. Anything troubling you? No, dear, nothing. That, perhaps you're worrying about your responsibilities. Those charts you will have to have made before Japan is invaded. No, I don't think I am. <laughs> oh, oh, I wish we didn't have to go back to Washington tomorrow. Oh, but we must, though. I've got some important conferences. Oh, here, put these in your bag, will you, Adele? I'm afraid I'll lose them in the sand. <laughs> well, why bring keys down to the beach? Well, I don't dare leave them in the hotel room. This little flat key. 
That's quite an odd shape. What does it fit? It's the key to the secret cabinet in my library, where I keep the confidential charts. Oh, no, Roy. Don't give me the keys. It's too big a responsibility. <laughs> All right. I'll hide them next time, under the rug at the hotel. <laughs> Let's go in the water. Come on. All right. I'll beat you to oh, it. Oh, just try. for you, Harding. Oh, hello, Colonel Higgins. Glad to see you. Sit down. Thank you. I thought it might be better for us to meet openly at the hotel dining room rather than me to go again to your apartment. A good many things have happened since we last talked, Harding. Yes. You've proved yourself a veteran. A trained counter-spy agent. Couldn't have done better. Anything the matter, Harding? Well, I think the big moment's here. It's now or never. All right. Just give me your orders. I'd like to have you invite Miss Winston up to your apartment Wednesday night for an informal dinner. Just you two. Oh, I'll try. You don't think, do you, Harding, Miss Winston is a spy? Yes, Colonel, I do. But, Harding, I kept the key to my secret file where she could get it, even called her attention to it. Harding, tell me the truth. You don't think Miss Winston was the girl who was with Blake on those trips before he committed suicide? Yes. His blood is on her hands, Colonel. And she's probably been responsible for the death of a dozen other men. Now, Wednesday night, after you've had dinner, I wish you'd go with her into your library for coffee. But, under no conditions, Colonel, drink the coffee. I'll casually drop in a little later. You intend to break her Wednesday night? If I can. I hope I can. What's the matter, Colonel? White as a sheet. I'm all right. Something? No. What is it, Colonel? You can tell me. Harding. I've fallen in love with her. You don't mean that. Yes. Yes, I do mean it. I love her. Good heavens, you can't. But I do. I think she's innocent. She didn't even try to duplicate the key. She... Well, she's never even... Tried to ask me questions about secret government affairs? He's a murderer, Colonel. He double-crossed you in a second. I didn't realize how lonely I've been. She's so clever, smart, beautiful. Everything about her. I can't stand it. You're not thinking of doing what Harold Blake did? No. No, not that. I guess I can see it through. I'm sorry, Colonel. Terribly sorry. Well, I guess there's no more to be said. We'll go through with it tomorrow night, as planned. Yes. But remember, do not drink any coffee that's poured. I wish I could say something, Colonel Higgins. I feel for you from the bottom of my heart. But this is bigger than you or me. I know. But still, I think she's innocent. Some more champagne, Adele? Please, Roy. That's a stunning evening gown. Very flattering. <laughs> Thank you, Roy. Some more champagne for you, sir? Oh, yes. Uh, oh, and James. Yes, sir. Miss Adele and I will have our brandy and coffee in the library tonight. Yes, sir. And uh, I'd like to have you remain this evening. Very good, sir. Oh, by the way, Adele, did you ever know Harold Blake? Blake? Oh, wasn't he the man who committed suicide about four months ago? Yes. Well, I, I guess I must have seen him. I don't think I remember him. An awful thing, wasn't it? Mm. Wasn't there some talk that, that it wasn't suicide? Oh, rumors, I suppose. Oh, like silverware? <laughs> you caught me looking at it, Roy. <laughs> yes, I do like it. You know, I had thought I was perfectly contented. Now it all seems so insignificant. To have something really worthwhile, you've got to have someone to share it with. 
I found the same thing too, Roy. Closeness and comradeship mean more than anything. Shall I have James serve the coffee and band in the library now? Yes, I can. I'd rather sit on the divan with you. <laughs> and, Del, uh, you look like the most sophisticated woman in the world, like one of those gorgeous paintings. And then you'll say something so tender. But a woman should be a mystery to a man. <sighs> there. Adele. Uh, no. I know. If you don't know how much. Oh, yes, I do, Roy. My heart's been acting the same way. It's been ever since that last trip. Do you love me, Adele? Yes, Roy. Very dearly. <coughs> oh, I... Uh, pardon me, sir, but a Mr. Harding and his friend have called. Oh, oh yes. Yes, James. Uh, show them in, will you? Oh, yes, sir. Why did they have to come at just this moment? Well, Harding's a very good friend. I guess he's just dropping in. We were on our way to the club. Thought we'd stop in, Colonel. Oh, I'm oh, glad to see you, Harding. Uh, have you met uh, Miss Winston? No, I don't believe I've had that privilege. Good evening, Miss Winston. Good evening, Mr. Harding. Miss Winston, there's a friend of mine, Mr. Peters. Good evening, Mr. Peters. Pleasure. Colonel Hagen's Peters. Good evening, Mr. Peters. Uh, won't you join us in brandy and coffee? No, thank you. Well, sit down, gentlemen. Make yourselves no, comfortable. Thank you. Well, while you men chat, I think I'll go and freshen up a bit. Well, we'll miss you. <laughs> you men stay here and talk. I'll be back in just a few moments. Harding, it can't be true. That woman is innocent. Colonel Higgins, ordinarily I wouldn't operate this way. But I owe it to you. Uh, tell me, Harding, tell me. She's really one of your agents working with you. Tell me that you suspected me and really did, the, did this so she could check on me. Tell me that. Ease my mind. Colonel, would you ring for the butler, please? Oh, yes. Yes. Harding, it's the butler you're really after. Tell me it's he and not Adele, isn't it? Colonel, I know how upset you are. I sympathize. But I can't change the facts. Now, don't say anything for a minute. Did you ring for me, sir? I believe the colonel wanted you to pour some brandy for me, please. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh. This is a gun on your stomach. Don't move. Harding. Sorry, colonel. Put the cuffs on him, Peter. Oh. I've got him, sir. <laughs> and he's the man you're after, not Adele. I believe he... Oh. There. Without his wig, he looks more natural, like his pictures. Your butler, Colonel Higgins, is Victor Strauss, one of the cleverest international spies. I am not. I don't know what you're talking about. Colonel, you might be interested to know that when your former butler was hurt by a car six weeks ago, it was a plot. The man at the wheel of the car which ran down your butler was this man standing here. He wanted to pose as the butler so he could get into your house here. We've been checking him for weeks. Here, you. Drink this coffee you serve the colonel. Yeah. You don't like dope coffee, yes, Scott? Please, Harding. Adele's coming back. What'll I do? Watch her when she comes in. I think she'll be pretty surprised. What is the matter in here? Well, is that your butler? His hair. Yes, Miss Winston. We removed his wig. <laughs> Why? Well, for the reason he happens not to be a butler. But Victor Strauss, a very noted international spy. A spy? He's a spy? Yes, and quite a catch. Well... I'm so glad you caught him. Peters, take Strauss over to the other side of the room. That's it. Come on, you. Uh, uh, Come on. Roy, you must feel terribly about this taking place in your apartment. Here, take this brandy. You look like a ghost. Oh, thank you, Adele. Thanks. Uh, Colonel Higgins, I have a recording I'd like to play for you. Would you mind my using your machine? Why, no, no. The switch is right on the side of the radio. Thank you. It's just a short recording. Well, I feel a little dizzy. I guess I'll sit here by you, Adele. What... What kind of a record is it, Mr. Harding? What's the purpose of it? Well, I believe it'll be self-explanatory. It was made last night. There. The voices were speaking rather softly at the time, but I'll turn on the full volume so we won't miss anything. It must be here. Get the camera ready. No. Nothing but personal papers. Colonel told me he kept them in the wall safe in his library. If we don't find them, you'll just have to keep on playing. Oh, that old fool. I want to spit in his face every time I get near him. Well, the plan's out here. We failed tonight. 
you probably put them in here tomorrow night. Oh, I hope tonight would be the last. We must break him and force him to commit suicide the way Blake did. If he won't, we'll poison his coffee. Oh! Not so quick. You thug, you vermin, I'll kill you. Adele, Adele, what are you saying? Fortunately, Colonel Higgins, the plans weren't there. If they had been, you wouldn't be alive tonight. Adele. If they'd gotten them, Adele Winston would have taunted you. She'd have gotten you intoxicated. She'd have told you she'd gotten the plans. You'd be disgraced. She'd have broken your heart. Or you'd have done what all the other men have done she's worked on. And I would have laughed at the stupid dog. Colonel, her real name is Gerta Stenya of Hungary and perhaps of Japan, a paid spy who goes to the highest bidder. And that man, Victor Strauss, is her husband. No. Take them all the way, Peters. The other agents are out in the front hall. I'm awfully sorry, Colonel. I had to expose the whole plot in front of you. So you'd never have any doubt. I didn't know a person could be hurt quite this much. You may have saved the lives, Colonel, of thousands of our men. I hope so. There have been a lot of people who've given all they had in this war. Hello, Colonel. Through the window. Return veterans coming down the street. You've done them and men like them a great service, Colonel Higgins. No one will probably ever know about it, but you will. I will. I know. And Harding, I'm glad I was able to help. After all, the war isn't over yet. Every one of us has still got to sacrifice. Some one way, some another. I guess this way is mine. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's counter-spy case with David Harding. But in the meantime, Mr. Pipe Smoker... Once you get that white, burly Kentucky Club flavor in your pipe, you'll have the sweetest pipe you ever smoked. There's no other tobacco quite like white, burly Kentucky Club when it comes to keeping a pipe in good taste. For Kentucky Club is a mild, free-burning smoking tobacco, pleasant and inviting from the first puff right down to the bottom of the bowl. It is mild the way you want it, yet is fully satisfying. It stays lit and burns clean, leaves your pipe sweet and fragrant. The white burly tobacco, blended the special Kentucky Club way, truly makes a difference. That's why pipe smokers everywhere agree that quality and smoking pleasure considered, it is truly America's number one smoking value, a value that challenges comparison. Smoke Kentucky Club pipe tobacco. Treat yourself to real pipe smoking enjoyment. This is David Harding speaking. Of the hundreds of counter-spy cases handled by my office, I feel the case we're going to dramatize on next week's program is the most unusual. It concerns probably the smallest thing ever sabotaged, so tiny it is invisible, so important that potentially it may affect every single one of us and be considered one of the great discoveries of all time. I invite you to listen. Wednesday, June 20th, same time, same station. David Harding, Counter Spy. David Harding, Counter Spy, is a Phillips H. Lord production for the Mail Pouch Tobacco Company of Wheeling, West Virginia. Don Lowe speaking. This is the Blue Network of the American Broadcasting Company.